On its own, K233b is already a pretty interesting planet. It's one of the youngest planets ever found, being just 9 million years old. The dinosaurs had already been dead for over 50 million years by the time this planet formed. It orbits a small red dwarf called K233 that's about 15% as bright as the sun, about 453 light years away from Earth. The planet's on a tight 5 day orbit around the star, at about 0.05 AU, far closer than Mercury orbits the sun. Despite the star not being that big, K233b still receives somewhere around 125 times the starlight from its star Earth receives from the Sun, giving it an estimated temperature of around 1070 degrees Fahrenheit, or 577 Celsius, ignoring the potential effects of a hypothetical atmosphere. There's a high amount of uncertainty as to how massive this planet is, but it's definitely less than 3.6 Jupiter masses. Because it transits its star, we know it's about 5 times as wide as Earth, which is a bit larger than Neptune. So the true mass of this planet is also probably similar to the mass of Neptune, though that hasn't actually been confirmed yet. It probably has to be bigger than 7 Earth masses though, because if it was smaller then it would have lost its entire atmosphere because of its star's intense radiation, even at its extremely young age. We know this planet probably does have an atmosphere that might contain carbon monoxide and tholin hazes too. So K233b would already be pretty interesting even if it wasn't suspected to have rings. As I said earlier, K233b transits its star from our perspective, meaning we can watch it pass in front of its star in various wavelengths of light. But K233b's transit has been off. The expected depth of the transit significantly decreases in wavelengths of optical and near-infrared light. For a while, there wasn't a really good explanation for this. Some thought it could be due to stellar activity, or that the planet could be surrounded by a thick layer of atmospheric haze. However, both of these options barely explain the data well, and it was clear that a better explanation was needed. And in 2022, a paper I'll link in the description suggested that the transit of K233b could be explained if the planet was surrounded by a dusty ring system. K233b is probably the most promising candidate we have for an exoplanet hosting rings we know of so far. There's HIP 41378F as well, and a few other puffball planets that could be explained by ring systems, but K233b is the only planet we know of where a ring system is really the only major possibility left. For other planets with candidate rings, the ring system is sort of used as an explanation for the apparent low density of the planets. But for K233b, actual positive evidence of rings exist, making them far more likely to actually be there. While there is still a chance they don't exist, it's low. And the James Webb Space Telescope should be more than capable of confirming the rings and even what some of their properties are. From what we know now, these rings, if they exist, wouldn't be entirely like Saturn's they'd more resemble a larger, more expansive version of the dust rings of Jupiter. There are a few possibilities for how thick the rings are, and to confirm that, we probably need observations from JWST, but there are scenarios where the rings are very optically thick like Saturn's, to more optically thin like the rings of the other solar system planets. Both scenarios would result in slightly different transits, which James Webb will be sensitive to detecting. Also, depending on what wavelengths of light the rings absorb, assuming they exist, we could also figure out their composition. This would actually be pretty cool to find out, because as I mentioned earlier, K233b is an extremely young planet. 9 million years old is half the age of other planetary systems I've covered on this channel, like AU Microscopii and Beta Pictoris, which I've already described as extremely young. We really can't do this kind of science in our own solar system because all of our planets are very old. Jupiter has dust rings too, but they probably didn't form alongside the planet itself. In the case of K233b, if it does have rings, then they might have. Determining the formation history of the rings would also help us determine the formation history of the planet, which itself is kind of a mystery. K233b is very close to its star, which you really don't expect for planets this young. The material required to form ice giants is, unsurprisingly, a lot of icy material, which usually only exists in the outer areas of a system. Usually when we see large gas or ice giants very close to their stars, we assume they migrated there after forming somewhere else in the system. But the very young age of K233 complicates that. K233b may have not had enough time to migrate to its current position, and so it's possible that it might have formed where it is right now, which is very much not expected. So if we can figure out what material the rings are made of, and if they formed alongside the planet, it could tell us a bit about the migration history. Did K233b just migrate really early or really quickly, or did it form where it is today? And if the rings do exist, there are questions as to how they formed. Dust rings like what might be here and what exists around Jupiter are expected to form by constant replenishment of dust from other places, like collisions with the planet producing it, or being captured from interplanetary space. 
but for K233B, there are a few more options. If the rings exist, it's possible they're as thick as they are because K233, the star, has a protoplanetary disk, significantly increasing the amount of collisions and capturing of dust K233B experiences. This could theoretically be enough to replenish the ring system on timescales like this, but we don't currently know if the K233 system has a debris disk or not. However, they are extremely common around young stars, which K233 definitely is, so it is definitely a possibility. Observations from the Spitzer Space Telescope do suggest that a disk like this may be present. Or, the rings could be a remnant of a debris disk around K233b itself, the kind of structure moons form out of around planets. So, there are clearly a lot of questions surrounding K233b, its potential ring system, and the entire K233 system itself, and we're still a long way away from answering a lot of them. The first step to doing so would probably be getting a reliable mass estimate for the planet, which would allow us to actually confirm what type of planet it is. Depending on how massive it is, whether similar to Neptune or potentially even closing in on Jupiter, would also add a lot more evidence for or against it migrating to its current position instead of forming where it is right now. Then, using James Webb, we could confirm the presence of rings, and maybe even some chemicals in the atmosphere of the planet, as well as the composition of the rings themselves. That would answer a lot of what we don't know, including, again, helping us figure out where K233b formed and where the rings come from if they exist. We expect different planetary compositions depending on where the planet formed in the system. This is seen very clearly in the solar system, as objects progressively get more icy the further away from the sun you go. There's a reason that almost every single object past Ceres big enough to be round under its own gravity has a liquid water ocean of some kind, except for Io and a few others. The further away from a star you go, the more icy things become, and knowing how icy K233b and its rings are would be very helpful in finding out where it formed, and whether or not it formed where it is now or migrated to its current position. Even if this planet doesn't have rings, which is a non-zero possibility, it's still incredibly interesting. We know of very few planetary mass objects this young, most of those are somewhere on the blurry boundary between planet and brown dwarf. There are only a handful of objects less than 10 million years old that we can reliably know are actually planets and not brown dwarfs or stars, and K233b is one of them. That, combined with the fact it's currently the most likely to host rings out of any known exoplanet so far, makes it probably one of the most interesting planets we know of today. We have probably discovered hundreds of ringed exoplanets, and as I've mentioned, we do know of a few candidates, but K233b is by far the most promising candidate for hosting rings. It also goes to show that objects this close to stars can have interesting systems around them. I've seen a lot of people saying that the reason Venus doesn't have a moon is because it's too close to the sun to have one, for example, which isn't true. Here's a planet several times closer to its star than Mercury orbits the sun that has a candidate ring system that could be pretty large. It probably won't last long, of course, because as the planet ages, the material to replenish the rings will probably slowly dwindle until the entire ring system dissipates. But it does potentially exist right now, and if it does, it will be here for a pretty long time. And if K233b is confirmed to be the first actual exoplanet with a known ring system, then it definitely won't be the last. Hopefully its rings are confirmed soon, and we can learn a lot more about how planetary systems like this form. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.